We're here with Dr. Usha Jain, NPA, no party affiliation, running for United States Representative, District 10. Do you believe that the government should have a balanced budget? Yes, I definitely would say that. I personally manage my budget and prioritize what is the most important. How should the Similarly, government- Similarly, the government should also aim for a balanced budget and prioritize what is needed for the people we represent. It all depends on what is happening at the time and what people need. We all should adopt according to the need of the people. If the people are hungry, you focus on the food. If people are having problem going to work, then you focus on the construction of the road. And if the people are having problem with the gas prices, then you try to produce oil in America so we don't have to import from the foreign countries. And um, also, if there's an increase in the crime, then you increase your military. So this is how you focus your budget according to the need of the people. What about when it comes to entitlements? Um, entitlements, um, I believe that if that particular program lifts people out of poverty and allows for them to better contribute to society, it should be capped. If a program does not do this, it should not be revised. It should be revised and eliminated. But if you're uh, talking about specifically for the veterans program, I would say that, yes, I would be always in favor of that. So is for social security, because we do need to take care of veterans who protected us and also the seniors who deserve because they, they gave enough of their contribution to this country. What about the military? Military, I consider that, that America is spending too much money in the military. And uh, the way I would fight uh, for the budget and try to balance the budget is cut down on the military because America spends, uh, 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 including 10 countries, way more. You can count 10 countries together and find that America spends that much money. No, but no other country spends that much money. So I think cutting the military spending would be a great way to balance the budget. What about bureaucracy? Oh, bureaucracy is, if we can stop the bureaucracy, this country would be even greater. And uh, this is one of the reason I'm running for the Congress because people cannot do their routine work because government controls and government steps in and they would not let you live your life properly. And uh, there are court officers, there are government people, they're running around trying to harass you. Unless you are a big corporation, you got a problem. So big corporation can get everything what they want, but these small businesses, which I want to uh, vote for, I want to say that they should be treated fairly. Unequality is not permitted in America. And that's why people live in this country. Do you believe that America is a great country? Oh yes, absolutely. The, uh, there are many reasons and people come from all over the world to come to this America because it's a great country. And uh, there are several reasons. I can give you a few of the reasons. First and foremost, for me or for anybody is the fairness and equality through the constitution. Everybody should be treated equally according to the constitution. There is no country in the world where would be diverse people, diverse citizens would be treated the same way. Second, America is the country where you get opportunity. 
education and safety. There is no other country like that. There are a few more reasons, and I'm going to try to say a few more uh, uh, reasons for that. This is a country where people are innocent until proven guilty. This is the country where we have the right to speak freely and voice to your opinion. First Amendment. This is a country where we can choose our representation in government. Moreover, this is a country where you can get all amenities like air conditioning, like cars. And equally important is the less corruption. And one of my reasons to run for the Congress is to fight for corruption because I don't want to live in third world. I want to live in America. And for that reason, I have to work hard to work against the corruption. If you don't do it, we'll be living in third world. Also, America is a great country because of diversity. I learned my own culture. I learned so many cultures in America, which I could never do it in India. And finally, I would say, this is the country that allowed me to start an amazing life for myself as a doctor through hard work and perseverance. I, I believe my story could not happen anywhere else in the world. And I'm running for the office to keep the same opportunities available for my future generations, for kids and grandkids. So I don't think there would be any doubt about that America is the great country. People may complain about it, but I always tell them that instead of complaining, why don't you fight against the corruption? Instead of rolling over, don't let them crush you. Stand up for your rights and fight for it, and we can keep America great forever. What is your position on the First Amendment? Okay, um, everybody should have a voice. I'm pretty sure everybody would agree with that. We should respect people with different opinions, even if we disagree. Our democracy functions because people can voice their opinion as they please. Protecting this fundamental right to free speech is very important. The First Amendment is what makes America a great country and free speech should be protected the First Amendment to the Constitution comes first because it's the most important right. I also believe that the government should not regulate what people have to say. The government could theoretically define whatever speech as a hate speech and use it to silence a group of people it opposes. And that's not what America is about. I do not believe in hate speech or threatening speech. So I would say that America is a great country because we have a First Amendment constitutional right. What about the internet? Okay, internet is uh, something new and it's a powerful tool that allows people to be more connected than ever before. It allows for people to be informed about their government and for people to express their viewpoints freely to a wide variety of audience. Protecting the freedom of internet is incredibly important so that people can continue to this incredible means of communication and that's why internet is a powerful tool and um, it should be protected. What about yelling fire in a theater? Oh my God, that I would not go for. This type of speech is explicitly threatening to human life and should not be allowed. What is your position 
on the Second Amendment? Well, I'm very supportive of Second Amendment because people should have a right to protect themselves and people should have a choice to carry uh, the uh, instruments, guns, which will protect them. But there should be strict guidelines and requirement to purchase a gun, just like a traffic light or driver's license. I believe in universal background checks for people looking to purchase a gun. The second amendment is very important to allow for your self-defense, defense of our country, and defense for our, from our own government should it become tyrannical. I'm open to supporting other measures that would stop school shooting, but not infringe the Second Amendment rights. What is your belief on big government? Um, I also wanted to say before I go into that, the mass shooting, mass shooting can be prevented if there are strict guidelines and requirement to purchase a gun, just like a traffic light. Personally, as a doctor, I don't think that 18 year old should be able to buy the gun. Brain of 18 years old is still developing and does not have all, all the ability to make the balanced decision as the frontal lobe is still developing. Mass shooting can be prevented by strict guidelines, who can purchase the gun and what kind of gun. I believe immediate requirement of installing, of supporting and other measures like gates, fences with barbed wires and security guard that would stop school shooting. I think uh, it's doable and we have to consider that first, but we still do not want to infringe on our second amendment rights. What is your belief on big government? Well, I don't believe in big government or small government. I believe in making the government an effective government that meets the need of the people whatever size it can be. A government should meet the need of the people it governs where the private or nonprofit sectors do not. There should be balance between state versus federal government. State and local government should play the largest role in the day-to-day -day operation of citizens. There should be balance between state and federal state and local government should play the day-to-day -day routine uh, uh, requirement for the citizens. Um, the, the government side should reflect at the time what is needed. Smaller government is needed when there is, a, uh, there is less overreach is needed, but maybe a larger government is needed when intervention is necessary like pandemic. Uh, this goes for every department, defense, healthcare, education, environmental, and roads. The 10th Amendment states, the power is not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. Should the agree. US, I'm sorry, should the US enforce its borders? Um, should the um, US enforce the border? Absolutely, yes. I support the immigrants who wants to enter the country in the right way by applying and following the process. But at the same time, they should not be waiting forever. We should have a strong borders to protect from illegal immigration and the people entering the country by crossing the border without screening should not be allowed. I'll fight for the fairer immigration laws and a system.
Do you agree with this statement? Without border enforcement, immigrants can cross at will, bypass our quotas and vetting system. Basically, skip the line of people trying to get into this country by following our regulations. I would definitely agree, nobody crossing the lines. And that's why we should need a barrier so nobody can just cross freely. They're bringing diseases to our country. They're bringing um, criminals to our country. And uh, now we have to employ more safety devices, more security guards, because people, when they are hungry, crossing the border and they need the food, what they would do? They would come and snatch the food from the people who have the food. And that's how you get robberies and all that. I'm from India and I know why people sometimes become robbers. They become robbers because they want to give food to their family. That's a situational robber. And, uh, and that situation should not arise here in America, because America is a great country and they should not create a situation that we be creating our situation ourselves to go into act like a third world. We are not in, we are not third world and we do not want to be a third world. That's the reason, another reason I'm running because I came from third world and I don't want to live in third world. I want to live in America where I came 45 years ago. If you were sick and had the choice to get treated anywhere in the world, where would you choose to get treated? Um, in general, America has better updated facilities and well-trained staff, which can make a difference in the medical care. Most of the problem related to Medicare in America would be solved if the doctor becomes in charge of that care, let the doctor be in charge of the medical care. Why be letting medical insurance companies and hospital be in charge? And that's where the problem is. If we can cut the grassroots, the grassroots is that, that the doctor is not in charge. Now they have to be governed by the insurance and the hospital. I went in medical school because I wanted to serve the people and I wanted to have my own way of serving it and I wouldn't have a boss. If I had known that I'm gonna be governed by the insurance, I don't know, I would have to think second time, third time that I want to go in medical school. Medical school is the hardest one in of any specialty. We work nights, we work days, we, I have worked 36 hours at one time. But I gladly did it because I wanted to be a doctor and serve people. My father died in accident and he didn't get the care properly in India. And that time I was little and I decided I will become a doctor and I'll serve the people the way I want. And to this point, I serve the people the way I want. I stopped taking the insurance because they won't let me do blood tests, things like that. But still, America is the best place to be treated. We do have flaws in the system. Cost is expensive. I mean, the, 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 it's costly. So a lot of people are going to different countries to get the care, but that should not be the case. We should work in such a way that we cut the cost, we make the doctor in charge for the medical care. But in some, I would still say that this is the best country to get the treatment because it has better uh, facilities and trained staff. What is your position on global warming? Well, that is happening. Humans are causing, we are causing it to happen through pollution. I believe everyone should be taking a responsibility to reduce the pollution by using more natural means. However, government should not control the people and not enforce laws to affect the daily routine of the people. I think as it is, there is enough harassment by the, by the government authorities, 
about not building this, not building apartments, not uh, having this properly. And then if you put another um, uh, laws about the pollution, then it will be it would be total disaster. Let people figure it out that they need to help themselves to reduce the pollution. And also work with other countries to make sure they do their fair share as well to stop this problem. But government cannot say that, oh, air conditioning is causing the pollution, so you need to stop or have it only two hours a day. That is not what America is about. We are smart people here in America. If they are given right information by the government, they will, they will support themselves by doing, using natural means and reducing the pollution. I, I did myself. I bought the, I, I have done the solar panels, things which would cause less of the uh, pollution. And that's what we need to do. The earth has been going through temperature changes ever since it has been in existence. How is this time different than the past? Well, there are not enough data about it, but I always go for the worst things. So, so for example, if you um, say that, well, maybe it is not happening, but why don't we consider as it is happening and it's, it can cause a problem, so just reduce your pollution. It's a simple solution to reduce the pollution. If everybody does that, I think we can, we can make a difference. So even if say somebody says, oh, there is nothing like that, but I would say, why not reduce the pollution? It cannot hurt us. It only can help us for our health, for global warming, for the earth changes. So I think it's a smart thing to reduce the pollution and everybody should take a responsibility to do that. But I don't want government to control it. There are some in our country that believe the police should be defunded. What is your position on defunding the police? Well, the majority of the police officers are very hardworking professionals and they have a mission to protect and serve their communities. They put their life on stake. When they go to the duty, they don't know whether they will come back or not. And it's a very noble profession. And I would do anything to protect them. And uh, same thing applies for the police officers, the one who enforce laws. Similarly, judges in justice system have taken an oath for equal justice under law. But unfortunately, like any career field. There are those who do not do their job properly. Any police officer or judge who do not follow the law should be held accountable. Any police officer engaged in police brutality should be held accountable and punished to the full extent according to the law. I also feel that police officers should be trained little bit more regarding the mental health emergencies and also de-escalation training should be emphasized to avoid situation where excessive force may take place. So I definitely want to protect our police officer and the law officers who protect us and enforce the laws. A role of the government is to provide peace and safety to its people. One of the ways the government does this is through the police. The police's job is to protect and serve. Do you agree with this definition statement? Yes, definitely. That's why we want police officers so they can protect us. Abortion is a hot topic. Where do you stand on abortion? Well, personally, I'm a pro-life. 
And as far as I'm concerned, all life should matter, including unborn child. And I go even farther than that, even animals. They have life too. And we see their life running, but we don't care about their life. That is not right. Just because we got a human life, we need to respect every single life on this earth. Furthermore, this is a complicated issue about the abortion. I also believe that women should have a right to make a personal decision. We need to come together as a country and decide at what stage of a pregnancy is the embryo now becomes a person. And we need to find a middle ground that respects the right of women and also the right of an unborn child. So I think pro-life is good, but this country is about the rights and uh, we need to come in the middle ground, which respects everyone's right. When it comes to incarceration, doing time for doing a crime, there is debate about racism and unjust bias in the prosecution and sentencing of individuals, people. Do you believe this is the case? Yes, I do. And uh, this should not be happening. America is about fairness and equal justice under law. It is a fact that minorities are incarcerated at much higher percentage than non-minorities. Similarly, it is also a fact that some judges in the justice system do not do equal justice under law as they're required to do. The people who are self-representing do not get equal justice and equal access to the justice system compared to the people who are represented by the paid counsel. Some of the minorities may not be able to afford attorneys, but they're smart and they should be able to represent that themselves. This is what this country about and they should not be treated differently. If the minorities who want to represent themselves and they're innocent, but they cannot hire an attorney and they cannot pay to an attorney, they should be allowed the same laws and same equal access to the justice system. And that is not happening. And that one of the reason I'm running for Congress that people who cannot afford attorneys, they're self-representing. They don't want to lose their business. They go to the court, they lose their shirt, they lose the time. Nobody pays for their time. And the innocent people are being, um, uh, being, getting in trouble and losing their businesses. Big corporations, they hire the highest paid attorneys. Uh, they are connected to the judges. Is that what we want in this country? Absolutely not. My father was an attorney and he was honest. We were not rich. He took only the case of a patient person if that person is honest. He never lost a case, but we were not rich, but we were dignified that everywhere we go, I was known that, oh, she's a daughter of that attorney who never loses a case. My father put a, his life on stake to take care of a poor lady who became widowed. And I cannot see this minorities in small businesses are being trashed in the justice system. It goes everywhere, starts from the judges to the police officers for everything. But this is not what America is for. America is a great country. It's well known in the world and it's number one country in the world. So why we do not fight against the corruption? Self-representation should be given the same chance as the one who is represented by a paid counsel. People, patients, some of my patients say, Dr. Jane, I cannot find a connected attorney. He's so expensive. 
Well, I get so upset. I said, gosh, this is crazy. So my number one reason is to give this back, this give this country something back from my side is to fight for the corruption. And if I don't fight, I think we're going down the hill. I can only fight and I can only say because I don't work for the hospital. I don't work for anybody else. I don't govern by the insurance. So I am in a position where I can say things which make sense and it will help some unfortunate people, unfortunate smart people who cannot hire an attorney. And sometimes they get incarcerated, sometimes they have to pay the tickets. They are paying the tickets, which is not fair, but they cannot get attorney. And then when they go to the judge, just say, go, get the attorney. Well, how that person is going to get attorney? He's barely making it. He's making only $15 an hour in a small business. So I have gone through this myself and I see their pain, but I can afford to do that, but some people cannot afford and they should be given equal rights. And I'm gonna fight all the way that everybody should get the same equal access to the equal access to the justice system and equal rights. And that's what very important because you hear sometimes that, oh, that person was innocent, but he was in the jail for 25 years. That's not what America is about. You got to stop that. And people like me will fight for you because I cannot stand that. And I think it's in my genes that I could not see things happening in America. If I'm going to see all these things all the time, I may as well, may as well go back to India. I'm here because of the great country. And if great country becomes third world, I don't know. I don't want, I want to fight. That's the reason I'm running. Justice and punishment should be based on equal grounds, regardless of race, class, creed, or background. And there's no doubt about that. But in reality, it need to happen. And people like me need to fight for the people. Laws and justice. During this COVID pandemic, government officials were letting prisoners out of jail. At the same time, some of the US population was told if they violated the COVID distancing practices, they could face fines and jail time of up to one year. What are your thoughts on this as it pertains to justice reform? Well, I think that is very bureaucratic that you're letting the criminals out and then asking the citizens who are trying to do the best job and making trying to make a living during the pandemic, try to hurt them by getting some money out of them for the department because they have to have that much money for their department to run. This is not right. I believe during the pandemic, the government should be role model to enforce the rule upon themselves. Instead of they run around and try to enforce the rule upon the citizens, government should, be the, should have the same agenda to protect the people and not control the people. The government and court system should follow the same CDC guidelines as they expect people to follow. During pandemic, some judges in federal court in Orlando did not follow CDC guidelines and required the citizens to go to the post office to mail the documents. CDC, the post office and CDC. According to the CDC guideline, post office is the major public place and it should not be allowed. There's a lockdown going on, stay at home order going on, but the poor citizen is, has to go to the post office, expose themselves, and what if they are disabled? And what if they are 70 years old with diabetes and high blood pressure? How is that fair that government is telling against the CDC guidelines 
to go to post office, why cannot that person file through electronic filing, which is a click on the computer, only a click on the computer and her document goes there. But these rules seems like only made for the people and citizens and not for the government. Now, you say that people are gonna, if they don't have a mask or they are locked down, they're gonna be fined. But what about the government? They should be protecting themselves and then they should have a responsibility to protect the citizens. So if they are protecting themselves by closing the court office, by giving computers at home, but what about the other citizens? They're not there for the citizens. So my first thing would say that during pandemic, the government should be role model. They should protect themselves. They should protect the citizens and do not find for the things which are trivial. Do it yourself first and then ask the people. And then people will automatically follow. But when they see that government and their boss Government is like a boss. If government is not following, why should they follow it? And that's where the problem is. And then again, small businesses get all the hits. There's so many, so many small businesses closed during COVID time because of that. So I would say that um, a court officer, there should be remote hearing but in court officers hearing, there's no remote. You have to go to the court office. They say that you will, they will provide the mask and there will be social distancing. When you go there, nobody's wearing the mask. Nobody has nothing. No social distancing is observed. On the paper, they say they're going to. I asked for remote hearing. They said, no. Well, they want me to go there. Where's, paid attorney can do through the remote hearing. I ask them, give me remote hearing, I'm over, I'm in a high risk, I have comorbid conditions. They said, no. So then you get a bitter feeling about the government that why they are doing that, they're supposed to protect me. They're supposed to protect citizens. If they can do the doctor, what they would do to a, a person who is making $15 an hour and barely making a living. So I think in pandemic or any situation, the government should be doing things to protect themselves and also protect the citizens. And if it is not done, people are not gonna follow. So you kind of touched on my next question. Do you think the federal and state government has been doing a good job handling the COVID outbreak? Mm, well, it is a question, yes, yes and no, because I know several places where government has, has went against, they have gone against the CDC guidelines. So if they go against the CDC guidelines, how can I say they're doing a good job? No, they're not doing a good job because they're not following their own agenda. They want to follow their own agenda for their protection, but they're not protecting citizens. And there should be a, there should be some kind of laws where they should be held accountable as well. Just don't control the citizens. You need to control your unlawful actions too. And I think that is the most important. How would you handle the COVID pandemic? The COVID pandemic, how would I handle it? I would say that first and foremost, I would travel the, um, I would ban the traveling because people are coming from different countries. We don't have a control. In the beginning, we didn't have a control. People are coming, crossing the borders and they're bringing diseases. Here I'm a doctor. I cannot, I do immigration physical and I check them, screen them for tuberculosis, gonorrhea, syphilis, all these conditions. But here the people are crossing from the borders every day. Nobody wants to do anything. They're infiltrating. So first and foremost is to stop the border and make sure that the people who are coming in this country are 
are eligible and they are COVID free. Education of our children has made its way into the national media. What are your thoughts on our education system? Well, education system, again, is just like doctors. Who should be in charge of education? That's the question. And if we solve, if we solve that question by right answer, we got the answer. So who should be in charge of the education? The teachers and educators should be in charge of education of the students. They are in the best position to determine the needs of their students and they should dictate the curriculum. The curriculum should not be politicized. And thank God my kids went to the school at the time, all these issues were not there. I would be devastated if my kid was taught sex education at five years of age. Oh, that would be horrible. We want to raise our kid the right way. So we don't want to be um, not, we want to be transparent, but at the same time, there is a time, a right time for everything. So let teacher be in charge and don't impose on the teachers and don't have a unions which would say politicize and teach this and teach that. They should make the curriculum and the parents should be in charge too because that's their kid who's going to the school. And parents would know what would be the right time for their kid to say things which are important to them. I don't think that kids should be taught about any offensive things. They should have a uniform. Everyone should have a uniform. Kids should respect each other. They need to respect each other. I made a song where people can say, let's be united and don't, don't do, don't fight with each other. It's simple. And if we, that simple uh, equation goes in the school, they're dressed up properly, things are not hanging, tummies are not showing up, belly showing up, holes are in the, uh, in the pants. Is that what our education is about? No. I had a better education in India if you're going, going to do that. I, I, we had a very, very important issues and we were never taught about whatever. As you grow up and when the time is right, your mom or your father or anybody who is there would tell you what you need to do. Teachers should not be part of it. And that's why there are so many things happening. The drugs are on rise. Um, people don't care. The students don't care. And the parents are being punished for telling and trying to get the best education fair for their uh, kids. How is that fair? That is not fair. The parents should be responsible and should have something to say. Don't get the parents out of the system because parents are the one who's, whose kids is that. The kids are parents and parents want their kids to do the best. My kids grew up here and I did everything in my power, but I never came across where there, there were offensive things were taught. If I came here in the early part and I found all these things, I probably would have gone back to India because doctors are treated very well in India. They are treated like a God and they, they know that they will cure your problem. And there's no reason for me to stay here if I thought that my kids are gonna be taught that way. Thank God my kids didn't have to go through that. They're well-educated, they're humble, and I'm very proud of my kids because they were brought up here and they were educated here and they have manners of America. And I love manners of America. When I came 45 years ago, people used to treat you like a person. I was, for, I was foreigner and they treated me from their heart. They opened my, their heart for me. They taught me, they taught me everything. So I am, I feel like that education is very important. My kids got the best education. They're on the high level for everything. I'm very proud. But I worry about my grandkids. 
we need to worry about future generation. And this is very important. Curriculum is very important. And if you don't have a right curriculum, then you have to take these kids out of the school and go to charter school or go to private school. People are homeschooling. Why do they have to homeschool when there is a, when there is a public school available? But anyway, um, everything should be left at the teacher and offensive things and all those should not be taught. What should be taught to our children? What should be taught to our children? We should be teaching them English, we teaching them mathematics. We should be teaching them how to self-defense themselves now, which is important. We need to teach them politeness. We need to teach them manners of America. We need to teach them God bless America. This is how I believe. And everybody should be given a choice of everything. So I don't think that any issue about racism and all that should be there. Racism exists. Let them figure it out. I figured it out that, you know, I have been discriminated and I swallowed my discrimination because I wanted to go up on the ladder. So it's a minor one. It's okay. But I know what has happened to me, but I still worked hard. And I was known in the community that I was the best doctor, not because I, they didn't, didn't care if I was a foreigner. I was a little worried about when I started my practice that I'm in a, I, I'm in a rich neighborhood, whether they're going to take me. I'm an emergency room doctor. I left my job, which I made good money. And also I was a trauma. I was at the trauma center. I, I was talented to take care of the ambulances, helicopter ambulances, cars, injuries, you name it. But I left to start my own so nobody can discriminate me. There were times when I worked in the hospital in the emergency room. I was the only woman doctor in the emergency room. I'm talking about 40 years ago. And I got the worst shifts. If somebody got two shifts and there's one extra shift, who would get it? Dr. Jane would get it. And I think that it is important that people, people need to, people need to figure it out themselves rather than say, oh, the America is racist. No, it is not racist. You're from a foreign country. And I, I recognize that I'm, a, I'm, I'm from a different country, but I'm naturalized American. There's a category of naturalized American and I am a naturalized American and I'm pro-American. And I want my kids to know that their roots are from India. I want them to do the best things take the best things out of India and take the best things out of America. And that's what I always tell people that I got the best of both. I got one foot for India and one foot for America and I choose what is the best for me. I am new school for reviews, YouTube, learning things. I'm old school for the records because I don't want to go to medical records where I have to work with the computer and I cannot look in the eyes of my patient. This is what not about, this is not what I'm about. So I did not take the medical records EMR though government was giving us $45,000 incentive. So I still have a record and I learned YouTube YouTube is great. I can give my message. I can show my dances. I can show my patriotism that what is about. We got internet now, which is amazing. People can tell you that, hey, you did a bad job. You did a great job. If somebody does a, say that, hey, you did a great job, I say, put it on the evidence. Evidence is Google. Google reviews your evidence. Of course, some once in a while, you'll get somebody else who would do wrong things, but that's okay. You have, to, you have to take that. So my thing is that education is very important. Our kids are backbone for our country. If you teach them that this country is racist, how is that, why you're here then? I go back to my country if this country is racist. They, we are putting our kids into a situation where they are thinking in that term and they should not be. I, I came as a foreigner and I had an accent. I still have an accent. So I'm okay. I'm okay if they can discriminate me a little bit. I, I, did, I did in the hospital. I said, no problem. I'm, a, I, I'm from a different country. If I got extra shift, I'm fine with that. 
But now, if you tell my kids who are born here to do extra shift, I'm not going to be okay with that. They should not be discriminated. They were born here. They are American, and they should not be taught that America is racist just because of your skin. I tell my patients um, who are Brazilian, I have a lot of Brazilian patients, I love them. They are very warm, welcoming. They smile, they make me feel good, but they have a white skin. But I don't, I don't. And now in the last few years, you have to worry about where you go because of your skin. I tell them you got a white skin so you can walk in, nobody would know you're American or what, unless you open your mouth. But there is a distinction happening and it's created by the government. Don't create the distinction. Let Americans mix together with diverse people because diverse people are very smart. They come from different country. They leave their, their parents, they leave their country to come here and you cannot discriminate them. And you cannot teach that America is a racist country. That is not fair. Just to clarify, I'm gonna ask this question. What should not be taught to our children and or left to the discretion of the parents? Oh, it's very simple. Why we are telling them about gender? Why, why they are very telling them about the sex education? Fifth grader is gonna know about sex education? Absolutely not. In my personal opinion, I feel that it is just going the kids, putting the kids in the wrong direction. Now parents don't know where to go because the kids, sometimes they cannot afford a private school. So now there is a system where you can take your money from the public school and do whatever, but that's not what should be. Everybody should be able to go to a school where they feel that they're confident that they're not gonna be taught something which would hurt their kids. And they, the kids need to be learning for themselves and not distracted by things which are not important. <laughs> I cannot believe that this is happening and I'm totally not agreeing with that. This has been an interview with Dr. Usha Jane NPA, no party affiliation, running for United States Representative, District 10. Can I say one thing? Yes. I want to, I want voters to check my YouTube and see my patriotism and what am I doing for the country. And it's important every single candidate should be doing that instead of raising money and cutting each other. Show your patriotism to the people. Song, dance, dress up, patriotic. And God bless America. <laughs>